And Danny I mean, Faulkner. Danny Faulkner is a young Earth creationist astronomer, teaches astronomy at the University of South Carolina, and believes so the is, and believes the universe is only six thousand years old. Yes, it's the underdog view, but that means absolutely nothing. So you're arguing for majority opinion. I mean, look at that historically. Well, then, if, if we followed your logic, we still think the Earth was the center and everything went around the Earth because that's what the majority taught. Let's take another analogy. That, uh, my I like that one. Out. I don't know. I like that one right there. Yeah. We'd still be teaching that your blood is bad, you take it out, the you know, doctrine of humors. We'd still be teaching the phlogiston theory. We'd still be teaching big rocks fall faster than little rocks because, after all, Aristotle said it. That one guy that suggested that doctors wash their hands in, in Dr. Dr. Fema Weiss. Yeah. yeah you're bringing up ancient examples. It doesn't matter. Today, it's nothing's changed. People eventually, are still the same. Oh, yes. Eventually Science in the future, Jared, quite a bit. Jared, eventually in the future, today will be ancient. Are you aware of that? Of course, Jonathan. Of okay. course. Okay, then you're going to say the same thing. Oh, well, that was. But when they look back, example. when they look back uh, at some future debate and they and they compare the kinds of differences between old science as we consider it now and current science and science now and science then, I'd be willing to bet my life that they will not think that they're the same kind of comparison. Uh, Jerry, I guarantee you, you look at this historically. In the 1800s, they thought the people from the 1600s were stupid, but they thought they were absolutely correct in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. I'm not making claims about intelligence. I'm making claims about correctness of science. Okay, I'm telling you, every generation thinks they are correct, and you are just a product of your times, and you think the modern interpretation is correct, and we're here on this wonderful radio program to straighten people like you out. No, and see, here's where you're wrong, Kent. I don't think that anything in science is correct. I think it's all wrong. From a philosophical point of view, it's all incorrect. So Darwin's incorrect, evolution's incorrect, or do you, every do you single just mean theory probable. in science is wrong. It's wrong, science it's just is probable. Science is a method to approach the truth. It doesn't try to claim absolute truth. That's what religions do. Hold on a second. You're saying everything is wrong, or science defines probability? I think that science is statistical and based on inference, oh, and you, that none of the numbers in science are hard. They're it, all wrong. That's, they're all wrong. Which how, means how, how none can, of it, you not, cannot build on any of it. How can you know such a thing? Maybe that statement you made is wrong. Maybe it is. Maybe everything is right in science, and well, you're wrong. If it's all wrong, then what are you doing on here defending evolution? That's because kind of what we're doing is trying consciousness. to approach the truth. So you're saying it's probable. You have found the truth, Jared. We're giving yeah. it to you. Well, it's are, are, you, oh, hold on. are you saying evolution is probable or evolution is wrong? I'm saying evolution is probable. Okay, then don't say all of science is wrong from a philosophical point of view, because... That's just ridiculous, man. I think uh, that everything in astronomy is probable. I think everything okay, is probable. Okay, but saying it's probable, probable and saying it's wrong are two completely different things. And point out, when well, maybe, out in, maybe in your use of your language, but I'm using the well, term. Well, I'm talking about common way. rhetoric, man. Okay, we both look out at the same stars. None of them have a date on them. None of them are sending us a message saying, oh, I'm 44 billion years old. I mean, mm -hmm. it's an interpretation we're putting on them. Yeah. We're all looking at the rock layers. I love geology. I have a huge rock and mineral collection right here. Come on down and see it. Dinosaur Adventure Land in Pensacola. We like fossils. We like geology. We love all that stuff. But we interpret it differently. So it's not the science that's different. It's the interpretation of the facts are the same. It's the interpretation of the facts. It's like the cow, how fast was that calf going? You know, that's the story what I tell on video four. Is. Science is the interpretation of the facts. Science exactly. is the theories over the facts. Okay. Your interpretation of the rock layers forming slowly and my interpretation of the rock layers forming quickly, and we have to both look at our interpretations. Okay, what does the evidence support? The evidence supports rapid deposition. All over the world, polystrate fossils are absolute proof of that. Why don't you see that? Um, here's the thing, and I already argued this, argued this with Jonathan before, and this is one of the points that I absolutely won on, which is that the, here's, a, here's a good analogy for you. Just because every point on the Earth has experienced a temperature of, say, 50 degrees Fahrenheit does not mean that there was ever a point in the past when every point on the planet was 50 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a confusion of quantification. I understand, that, and that's correct. But see, it's a fact there are continent-wide layers of sediment. There are layers of limestone that cover just about the entire United States. Okay, so I think it was a worldwide flood. All right, we got break time, folks, and I'm headed for the airport. Jonathan, you take it from here. Join us again Monday, folks. I'll be back. All right. Welcome back to the Creation Science Hour. This is Jonathan Sampson running solo from here on out for the next hour. Uh, this is June 17th here in Pensacola, Florida. I'll pause the video real quick. All right, and I've got on the phone with me Jared, um, who's an evolutionist, calls in a lot, really faithful listener, and really enjoy him. I think we're the only two guys on the radio who actually say dude a lot. Which is cool. <laughs> I'll notice that, too. Yeah. So anyway, uh, for all the dudes and out there listening, you guys can contact us right now on Dr. Dino Live uh, if you have a question for Jared or myself, or you know, I guess we'll be exchanging a few back and forth as well. 
The screen cool. name is, uh, well, I contact us on AOL Instant Messenger. My bad. Dr. Dino Live is the screen name, D-R-D-I-N-O-L-I-V-E. And we also have one telephone line coming in, which Der- Der- Jared is currently occupying. It's one eight seven seven four seven nine three four six six extension 136. And, uh, okay, Jared, where were we just at before we went to break? Uh, yeah, let me clarify one thing that, that got kind of muddled. Uh, you, when you, you accused me of appealing to authority, and uh, you, you almost had a case there, but let, let me explain why I think that's not true. Okay. It's not true because I'm not claiming that geologists are correct because there are a lot of them that say what they say. Mm-hmm. What I was arguing is that the term geology is defined by geologists. And that whenever you say that you accept or don't accept geology, you pretty much have to, uh, I don't know, evaluate that claim against the majority opinion. So you're saying the majority opinion or the majority of geologists are allowed to define geology? Yeah, because I don't think there's any other rational way to do it. Uh, well, I think the traditional definition, the study of the Earth, is pretty good. Okay, so, I mean, in a technical sense, you could say somebody's a geologist if they're also a young Earth creationist, but it doesn't jive with the way that we use the term. Well, it doesn't jive with the way you use the term, but the traditional term geologist doesn't really refer to your perspective of Earth's history. It just says you are a man who studies the Earth. Okay. If you have a Ph.D. or not, I don't know. I'm I'm working on my Ph.D. in math, but whatever. Um, That's cool. So let's just say, okay, so take a historian, for for example. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure that you believe in the Holocaust, right? Of course. Yeah. I mean, you're really sure of that. It happened. Oh, I never saw it or anything, but I would say, yeah, it, I'm, it's probably Even though you haven't seen it happen, I mean, you, you have some strong faith that it happened. Uh, actually, it, it actually, well, I don't, I can't say that it did. I'm pretty sure it did, you know. It's different, but that's the difference about historical things. There's documentation and all that, you know, witnesses and things like that that say it did. I wasn't there. But I put my faith in these people that it's true, so I'm pretty right. sure it I happened. Mean, so you're not you don't, you don't have absolute assurance that it happened, but no, you're I don't have pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Okay. Yeah. Pretty I much would say the same. Ninety nine percent to the hundred fortieth decimal spot, or something e- like that. Exactly right. So you have this, like, this little smidgen of doubt, but not really. You know, like in the way that we use the term doubt and believe, like you're not really going to argue about that, right? Yeah. It's kind of like uh, did Abraham Lincoln exist? It's the same kind of question. Like yeah. yeah I give it this tiny probability that he didn't exist, but let's not, you know, screw around with those kind of numbers, mm-hmm. right? Okay, so if a historian says that they don't believe in the Holocaust, they're going to be marginalized within the community of historians. Nobody is going to take them seriously. Well, right? some people may, but the majority will not, of course. Right. I mean, you, you just don't, you laugh at them. They're not going to end up on TV unless it's some kind of debate to make them look stupid. It, mm-hmm. They're not going to be trusted as an authority. I agree. It's it's pretty much the same kind of thing when it comes to biology with evolution or geology with the old age of the. No, I understand Earth. that, but you all, you agree that the popular or the majority opinion could be false, right? I absolutely contend that okay, the evolution then... could be false, but I'm just saying it's one of those things where like the probability is so small that we operationally accept it. I understand that, but you're in this particular example. You have a, I guess you're pre- presupposing that the Earth is billions of years old. And the, for these people who say it's not are automatically wrong, as opposed to saying there's a chance that they may be right. No, I, I no, I'm not presupposing that the Earth is billions of years old. Well, I mean, in I, this I analogy here. Yeah. Well, I didn't think that as a kid. I know that, I, but I but right this it. minute, whenever you were explaining, because you used uh, a pretty verifiable fact, the Holocaust in history, to represent, I guess, an analogous form of the Earth being billions of years old. Correct. Right. Right. So you are presupposing the Earth is billions of years old in that analogy. Well, I guess if you want to use the term presuppose, I, I don't like that term. That uh, case, okay, but. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to go there. So, uh, I guess where do we go from that? Um, I'm just all I'm trying to say is that that's why evolution is accepted is because it it looks that way. Oh, all I agree. the evidence is pointing toward it. I agree. We can both look at one thing and see. Have you ever seen those? Uh, I'm sure you have. There's a picture of an old woman. And beneath oh, it, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. like a little bar joke or something. It says one right. beer, two beer, three beer. Uh-huh. And you can turn this picture slowly around, and it becomes a young, beautiful woman. Right. And that's, honestly, if you ask me, I think that's the way we do it. Evolutionists are on one side of the table. Creationists are on the other side. We're both looking at the same thing. We're looking at this Earth. We don't have different Earth to observe. We're not doing that. We're just looking at the picture from a different perspective. That's exactly what I think it is. So your evidence, you know, the fossils are my evidence as well.